Testing. 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 One, two, one, two. Testing. Testing. One, two. Testing. 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 One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Testing. One, two, three. One, two, three. Well, good morning. Welcome to worship. It's great to see you here today. My name is Evan. I'm the pastor here at St. Paul's, so we want to welcome you, whether you're worshiping online with us this morning or here in person. We've come today to worship God together, uh, to celebrate our VBS, which ran this past week, and um, to uh, enjoy fellowship with one another. As we begin today, I'm going to invite Melissa to come and share 
announcements with us. Good morning. Just a couple of things. We have prayer cards in the pews. If you'd like to submit a prayer card to go into our intercessory prayer or to be read on our uh, Wednesday check-in, you can fill one of those out, and they will be collected during the time of offertory. Uh, if you're online worshiping with us, you just need to put it in the comments or send us to us in, in, in a messenger, and we will get it. Uh, we have our midweek worship on Wednesdays, uh, 7 p.m. In the, in the youth room, and everyone is welcome to attend. Uh, we don't have many flowers on the altar for August, so if you're interested, we have envelopes in the back. You can pick one up and put your name on a date, and we can have flowers on the altar. It's $25. Uh, we have next, this upcoming Saturday, we have the Women's uh, of St. Paul's is hosting the Potluck Dinner and Potluck Bingo. So you want to bring a covered dish and also a wrapped gift, new or nearly new. There is a sign-up in the Narthex, just if you want to see what everybody's bringing. So you can either bring something similar and compete for who has the best potato salad, or you can bring something different. Uh, those are our announcements for today. Uh, let's take this time to quiet our hearts, prepare for worship with our prelude.
you please join me in an opening word of prayer? Dear Lord, thank you for being with us here today, giving us the opportunity, Lord, to gather as a worshiping fellowship within your name, Lord, to be here as one body in Christ. Whether we're in this room or we're worshiping online, we can do that together, Lord, in your name. We lift up today our service and all the participants. We lift all up our congregation members, both here and at home. And we just want to lift up today and every day in your holy and precious name. Amen. Amen. Please join us for our first hymn of praise, When Morning Glides the Skies, found in your red hymnals on page 185. will also be on the screen behind me. Please stand as you are able. be praised alike at work and prayer may Jesus I repair to Jesus Christ be praised the night becomes as day when from our heart we say May Jesus Christ be praised. The powers of darkness sleep when they sweet chant they hear. May Jesus Christ be praised. Let all the earth and hell rejoice. Sound. May Jesus Christ be praised in heaven's eternal bliss. The love is this is this. May Jesus Christ be praised. Be this my life is long. My catechal divine, may Jesus Christ be praised, be this eternal song, through all the ages long, may Jesus Christ be praised. Amen. Please be seated. Well, for our children's time this morning, we have a special recap from our Vacation Bible School. So I'm going to invite uh, Kara to come and to share about our VBS. I want to invite all volunteers and any children from our program to come join me at the front. All right, good morning. Today we are here to share with you the fun and success of this year's VBS program, Hero Hotline. My name is Kira Cavanaugh, and along with Hector Meza, who's running our slideshow in the back, we are your VBS directors for this year. We are also joined today by our very special friend, Super Mir, who was our mascot for the week. 
Now this past week, St. Paul's was transformed into a secret underground superhero cave where the children became superheroes and each day learned how that they can serve God at, with their special talents or superpowers. We had our hotline verse, which was from Romans chapter 15, verse 19. And if our volunteers and heroes remember, they can say it along with me. So let's strive for the things that bring peace and build each other up. Nice job. So using this verse as a foundation for the week, our heroes became members of the underground Hero Hotline headquarters and learned how through God, every hero has an important role to play in order to bring peace and build each other up, as well as share God's love for all of us. This year we were blessed to have 75 children from pre-K to fifth grade and 63 volunteers. We would like to recognize some of our leaders this year, starting with our class leaders. The Incredibles was led by Kathy Deal. The Thunderbolts led by Sharon Beekler. The Defenders led by Di Diane Palafrani. The Titans led by Caitlin Zuchek. The Trailblazers led by Brielle Ebner. And the Daredevils led by Hector Meza and Lydia Widbing. So if you can give them a round of applause. Each day, our heroes watched a Bible drama during assembly time, which was led by our storyteller, Judy Tomes, and acted out by our volunteer actors. The heroes then attended our six stations. We would like to recognize letters, uh, the leaders for each. And first is music led by Samantha Oliveira and Judy Tomes. And we're actually going to share our main theme song with you. So if you guys go down in the middle. Hopefully you remember the moves.
Thank you, guys. So after music, the heroes would go to one of five stations, and they would rotate throughout the day. We had our recreation station, led by Steele Ebner, snack led by Ann Macaluso, crafts led by Kathy Porzio, science led by Donna Ferguson and Courtney Zaplinski, and mission reflection station led by Melissa Jensen. We want to share a little bit about our missions that the heroes helped with throughout the week. Each day at missions, our heroes learned about a new way they could help others in need. One mission had them donating goods to our food pantry. Over the week, our heroes and volunteers collected a total of about 200 items for our food pantry. Really amazing. The second main mission was to raise money for the mustard seed preschool students and any potential school supplies that they might need. Our annual Friday bake sale, which the heroes made signs for, contributed to this mission. At the bake sale, we raised a total of $418, and the heroes, hold on, there's more, and the heroes collected $195 in their phone booth banks that they made on the very first day of missions. In total, our program raised a total of $613 for the Mustard Seed Preschool. And this was $200 more than last year's VBS. Yeah. We would like to take this time to give a huge thank you to all of our heroes for the hard work they did on top of all the fun they had. And of course, we want to thank each one of our VBS volunteers. Our volunteers got up each early morning, helped our heroes get to each station, have as much fun as possible, while also learning the core message of our program that everyone has a purpose in God's plan to help others, whether they realize it or not. If it was not for our volunteers, this program truly would not be possible. So thank you. This has been an exciting and awesome week for not only the heroes, but for all of us who took part in this program. So we extend a thank you to the families of the children that attended and to you, the St. Paul's congregation, for your continuous support of this program. If it was not for you, this program would not continue every year after year. We would also like to thank Hector for the work he has done for this program and wish him, Lydia, and him and Lydia good luck as they tech take their next step forward to serve those who need them. So thank you. Thank you for letting us share about our program this year, and we hope to see you back next year as well. All right. Friends, I just, I just want to offer uh, just two quick things. First, thanks, special thanks to Jan. Primrose for handling our paperwork and all our registrations, and thank you to Kara uh, for her role in spearheading this and making this happen. Thank you, Kara. Well, friends, as we continue worshiping, let's stand and greet one another today. Hero Hotline.
At this time, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Holy Heavenly Father, we come before you once again on this beautiful Sunday morning, acknowledging that you are a God who is more holy than we could even think or imagine. And we know that you continue to exercise kindness and justice and righteousness throughout the earth. We thank you for your mercy, your grace, and your faithfulness to us. And we pray that uh, you will help us by the power of your Holy Spirit to keep our trust in you. Help us to love others as you do and forgive others as you do. We call upon Jehovah Rapha, our God who heals, for your healing touch upon those among us who need healing of body, mind, or spirit. And thank you for the eternal healing that those with you in heaven now have in their new glorified eternal bodies. We thank you for your forgiveness and the promise of eternal life and for the gift of your Son who allows us to feel your presence. May we always be grateful for every good and perfect gift that comes from you. Bless those gathered here today and worshiping online as we come together to encourage one another in love and good works. Help us all to live by the verse that the children learn in Vacation Bible School this week. So let's strive for the things that bring peace and the things that build each other up. May we realize that our role in prayer is not to impress you with our fancy language or vocabulary, but to praise and glorify you, to express our needs, and then to listen. Sadly, we often miss out on what you want to say to us because we're busy doing all the talking. So we pause now for a moment to listen to you. This morning we ask that you would be with Jordan as she's about to deliver her baby. And may the surrounding community that we live in and the world know that we are your disciples of Jesus by the love we have one for another. We ask that you would help us to see everyone as Jesus saw them, made in your image. Help us to be a bold witness for Christ and be a church of love, hope, and healing. Lord, as we continue in our worship and throughout the week, remind us that we are blessed by you so we can be a blessing to others. And as we leave here today, may all that we say and all that we do bring glory and honor to you. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite our ushers to come forward to receive this morning's offering as we... Enjoy special music from Judy, Janet, and Sharon. Start it over, John. It didn't come through. Didn't come Thank right. you. There we go. There's got to be more than going back and forth. From doing right to doing wrong. Cause we were taught that's who we are. Come on, get in line right behind me. You along with everybody. Thinking there's worth in what you do. Then like a hero who takes the stage when we're on the edge of our seats singing it's too late. Well, let, let me introduce you to amazing grace. No matter the bumps, no matter the bruises, no matter the scars, still the truth is 
the cross has made the cross has made you flawless the cross has made you flawless no matter the hurt or how deep the wound is no matter the pain still the truth is the cross has made the cross has made you flawless could it possibly be that we simply can't believe that this unconditional kind of love would be enough to take a filthy wretch like this and wrap him up in righteousness but that's exactly what he did no matter the bumps no matter the bruises no matter the scars still the truth is the cross has made the cross has made you flawless the cross has made you flawless no matter the hurt or how deep the wound is no matter the pain still the truth is the cross has made the cross has made you flawless oh yeah take a breath smile and say right here right now i'm okay because the cross was enough then like a hero who takes the stage when we're on the edge of our seats saying it's too late well let me introduce you to grace grace god's grace no matter the bumps no matter the bruises no matter the scars still the truth is the cross has made the cross has made you flawless the cross has made you flawless no matter the hurt or how deep the wound is no matter the pain still the truth is the cross has made the cross has made you flawless no matter what they say or what you think you are the day you called his name he made you flawless he made you flawless no matter the bumps no matter the bruises no matter the scars still the truth is the cross has made the cross has made you flawless thank you friends let's stand as we sing the doxology God, accept the gifts that we bring today. May they be used for your honor and your glory. We pray in Christ's precious name. Amen. I invite you to remain standing for our hymn of 151. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart, not 
not be all else to me save that thou art. Thou art best thought by day or by night, waking or sleeping, thy presence my light. Be thou my wisdom and thou my true word. I ever with thee and thou with me, Lord. Thou and the Holy Ghost in my heart. Great God of heaven, my treasure thou art. Great God of heaven, my victory won. May I reach heaven's joys so bright and sun. Heart of my own heart, whatever before, still be my vision, O ruler of all. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Today's Old Testament scripture is from the book of Genesis and can be found on page 53 in your pew Bible. Genesis 32, starting with verse 22. That night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, thank you, his two maidservants and his 11 sons and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, Let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, What is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, Your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with men and have overcome. Jacob said, Please tell me your name. But he replied, Why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, It is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. The sun rose above him as he passed Peniel, and he was limping because of his hip. The New Testament reading is from the book of Matthew and is found on page 1520 in your pew Bible. Matthew 14, 13. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said, and he directed the people to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied, and the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men, besides women and children. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you, Janice. Well, friends, would you join me in prayer this morning? Loving and gracious God, speak to us today. 
We're hungry for a word from you, and so we pray that you might open our hearts to receive whatever it is that you would give us. This we pray in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. How many of you know what your name means? Some of you do. Judy, what does your name mean? Praise. Praise. All right, we got a bunch of Judys here, so that covers a bunch of people. <laughs> Peter, you had your hand up. What does Peter mean? Peter's built on stone. Built on stone. Very biblical name. Anybody else know what your name means? Janice. Janice is the female version of John and was beloved of God. Did you hear what Janice said? It's the female version of John. It means beloved of God. Nathaniel, what does your name mean? Gift from God. I'm afraid to ask Tony what his name means, <laughs> but I'm going to take a step of faith. And say, Tony stands for to New York. To, to New York, huh? <laughs> Somehow I don't think that's what that means. Oh, I'm calling on you. You don't, I know your name, baby. Say it loud. Old friend. That's Auden, by the way, one of my twins. Mary, what does your name mean? Mother of God. We have some powerful names in this house, don't we? What, what does Nelson mean? Champion. Champion. Wow. So we have our names, which we've identified. Judy means praise. Peter means built on rock. We won't get into what Tony means. So we, we know names signify something, don't they? Now, when you couple that with a surname, your last name, what do you have? What do you carry with you, with your last name? Family, heritage, a long history, right? Your, your first name, now listen carefully to the explanations that some people gave of their name. A lot of that is what? It is forward-looking. It is about living into a particular destiny, a particular reality, a way of being, right? Beloved, champion. Built on rock. Praise. Those are all aspirational things. Things toward which we might strive. Good. Beauty. Goodness. And we carry with us our last name, which brings the past into the future, doesn't it? We carry with us our heritage. All the people who have formed us into who we are. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And friends, we've all got that in our families, don't we? All of that is signified by our last name that we carry. So your name, both your first name and your last name, we can leave out middle names for now, if you have one, bring together the future and the past into who you are in the present. Names are so vital and key in Scripture. A name is just not nomenclature. Not just something that sounds nice coming off the tongue like Nathan or Esther or David or Abraham. In the Bible, a name means something significant. And we find moments in Scripture when someone's name is changed. Because they step into a new destiny, a new role that God has for them. We've already found that once in Genesis, haven't we? With Jacob's grandfather. Who goes from Abram... To Abraham and Jacob's grandmother, Sarah, who goes from Sarai to Sarah. And in that name change comes a shift in who they are and in what God has called them to do and to be. Well, today our Jacob takes again center stage in our story from Genesis. We know what his name means, don't we? The deceiver. And we already have seen that his actions, the way that he has treated people, the way he's interacted with his brother, his relationship with his parents, deceit, 
a lack of integrity and truthfulness is all tied up in those relationships. So his name, Jacob, literally says something about his character. And so we've seen him deceive, take what was not rightfully his, by deceiving his father into getting the blessing that should have gone to Esau. Esau is enraged. Jacob flees for his life. And what happens? He goes back to where his mother is from. And in Laban, his mother's uncle, he finds he's met his match. He deceives him by tricking him when when, uh, Jacob wanted Rachel. And instead, he got Leah as his wife. And then Laban had him work a whole lot longer so that he could have Rachel as his wife. And we find today in Genesis 32, now we've gone from chapter 29 last week to 32, and in the middle of that we find um, that after 20, 25 years or so, maybe longer, finally Jacob and Esau are going to meet. And they've worked through messengers and emissaries to sort out this meeting. Jacob is going to bring all this stuff to try to appease his brother. He's bringing cattle. He's bringing goods. He's going to try to reconcile with him. And it is the night before he goes to meet Esau that he wrestles. This famous scripture where Jacob encounters scholars or A little unsure whether we're supposed to understand Jacob as wrestling with God himself or an emissary, a messenger of God. But that's really beside the point. We find in the Old Testament all the time that God will will act and work through an angelic messenger. The angelic messenger conveys God's very will and his presence to a human being. So there is a divine messenger that Jacob wrestles with all night long. If you're wrestling all night long with someone, that's not just a little skirmish. That's not just a little tussle. Jacob is fighting for his life. This is a huge moment. He's on the precipice of something here. And he knows it. And he's fighting and wrestling. And daybreak comes and he says to his wrestling partner, I won't let you go until you bless me. I won't let you go until you bless me. So how does the angelic messenger respond? God's emissary. Tell me your name. What's your name? His name is Jacob. Friends, sometimes God won't lead us into a place of real change until we're willing to admit who we are. Jacob has to say out loud who he is. The deceiver. Someone who has hurt other people, who has used them, who has manipulated, who has not lived with integrity. And until he's willing to say out loud who he is, there's no possibility of change. And the same goes for us. If we're not willing to look at the hard truth and to say out loud the things that we have done and the things that have done to us, God will not bring us into a new identity and into a new place of knowing and realizing His blessing. We have to grapple with the old before we can move into the new. We have to deal with our past if we're going to have the future that God wants for us. And so Jacob wrestles, he, gets, he says his name to the angel, the angel gives him a new name. His name is Israel now. Now here's the thing with this name change. Jacob, his name is all about him. About his, his lack of, of, uh, of, of moral upstanding character. That he is a, not a truth teller. That he deceives. Do you know what the name Israel means? Scholars actually think that the the primary actor in the name has shifted. With Jacob, the focus was on him. With Israel, the focus is on God. 
God, the one who struggles and the one who provides. All of that is wrapped up and implied in that name Israel. Jacob, in a moment of transformation, goes from a life that is about him and now shifts into a new identity where the focus is not on himself, where the focus is instead on God. And get this, after they finish wrestling, Jacob asks a a question. He's been blessed. He has a new name. He asks a a reasonable question, right? I mean, if you've wrestled with, with, with this divine messenger and you've been given a new name, wouldn't you want to know who it was that you're wrestling with? So Jacob just says, and what is your name? And what does the messenger reply? Why do you ask my name? You're blessed. And he's gone. Why do you ask my name? You're blessed. And he's gone. Leaving Jacob with a limp that he carries with him for the rest of his life. A a visible, tangible, physical sign of his transformation experience. If you wonder though, why, why, why doesn't he get an answer? To what seems like a very simple question. Well, I heard something this week that deals with that little text that is so profound, and that is this. When you encounter God and you leave transformed, God stamps his name on you. And you have to know your new name. And if you know your new name, you know the one who gave you that name. When God touches and transforms you and changes you, He leaves His stamp on you. He leaves a mark. And if you know that stamp, if you know that mark, you know the one who stamped you and marked you. The early church in the book of Acts, they were called Christians. You know what Christian means? Little Christ. Christians were called the name of the one that they followed. That was their identity and that was their name. They carried his name. And so for you and I, if we're gonna, if we're gonna move into what God wants for us, if we're gonna let go of the old and move into the new, if we're gonna allow God to clean us up, to deal with our, 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 our lack, to give us a new character, we have to let go and be willing to step into what he wants to do and receive his name and his stamp on us. To move from a life focused on ourselves and what we do and what others have done to us and all of that stuff that we carry and receive his name. To understand ourselves as he understands us. To see ourselves in his light. Not our own or not how anybody else sees us. Who he sees us, what God calls us, is our primary identity. Nothing else matters. Rich, poor, Republican, Democrat, white, black, all of those things fade into the background as we take on our new identity, the stamp with which we have been marked, that we are now His, that He's made us new, that He's changed us. Friends, that's the promise for every Christian It's given to us. God wants us to live into that. Sometimes we've got to wrestle Sometimes we might walk away with a limp. Change is never easy. But over and over again in the scripture, God will take someone to a place, not to hurt them, but to change them. Because so often change happens on the crucible, it's uncomfortable, it can hurt. But coming out on the other side, we realize that we were created for more than just what has been. That God wants to bless us with his promise, just as he blessed Jacob. Friends, are you ready to move from the old into the new? To live into your identity of who God wants you to be? Get ready, maybe for a little pain. It hurts a little bit. You might walk away with a limp, but you'll be able to look back on that place and call it blessed. Amen.
Friends, as we come to the table of the Lord today, I invite you to take your hymnal as we join together in a confession of faith. We're going to do a little different affirmation of faith uh, today. I'm going to invite you to turn to your hymnal to page 887. 887, this affirmation from the book of Romans, chapter 8. It's in your red hymnal, 887. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? These things and conquerors through the one who loved us. We are assured that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor highest height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Friends, as we come to the table of the Lord this morning, I invite you to take your hymnals and turn to page 12. The red hymnals. Page 12. Christ our Lord invites to this his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and who seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And please join me at the great thanksgiving on page 13. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets, who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, when nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither should they learn war any more. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and we join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor to proclaim release to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. 
This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as together we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. And by your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to the whole world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now let us pray the prayer Jesus himself taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, this is the body of Christ broken for us. And the cup of salvation poured out for us. I would ask those who are assisting with communion this morning to please come forward. Friends, the table of the Lord is ready and all are welcome to come and to receive his grace that we find here in the bread and in the cup. At our usher's direction, you'll be invited to come forward. I invite you to come with your hands out to receive this gift of God's grace. You'll be given a piece of bread, which you may eat, and then take the cup. Return to your seats by the side aisles, and there are receptacles as you go back to your seats where you can deposit your cups. I invite you to come as you will.
Would you please join me in prayer? Almighty God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into this world strengthened by your Holy Spirit to give ourselves for others. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. I invite you, as you're able to please stand for our closing hymn, God Be With You. It's on 672 in your hymnal. Sisters, go forth in the power of God the Father, the love of God the Son, and the comfort of God the Holy Spirit. And together, all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.